morning, everyone. It's 10 o'clock. Let's call the Commissioner's Court meeting to open October 23rd, 2018. At this time, we would like to ask Mike Meadows with Central Baptist Church to please lead us in prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for this day in which you've given us. We thank you for this cool weather and rain. And uh, God, we thank you we live in a country where we have a freedom to vote. And uh, God, as elections are going on, we just pray for those processes. And God, just pray that they uh, would bring about your desired results. And God, as these people that sit in these positions of authority <coughs> exercise the power and authority given to them by you through the people of this community, I pray that you would give them wisdom and discernment to make decisions in accordance with your will. Just as you gave Adam the garden to tend and cultivate, you've given these men and women the, the job and responsibility to tend and cultivate this community we call home. And so God, we thank you for their service and we pray you give them wisdom and discernment once again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Mr. Johnson. Pledge <coughs> allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Item number two, public comment. Madam Clerk, did anyone sign up? No, no ma'am. Item number three, informational report. Uh, at this time, we're going to have the yearly informational report and from Santec Environmental. Good morning, Your Honor. Distinguished Commissioners, I've met a few of you, Mr. Overstreet and Mr. Willis. I have yet to meet you. Catch up with each other. Yes, we're going to know you <laughs> Tell you a little bit about myself. My name is David Fulton, and I was born and raised in the Midwest, and grew up owning and operating and helping my father run a sanitation business in the Class 1 and the Class 3 landfill. And was hired on by Santec at July of 9th of this year, and the year, yearly report right now, 2017, total tons was one. 118,000 tons to date. That's from January 1 to September the 30th. In 2018, a total tons of 152,225 total tons from January 1 to September the 30th. That's a 768 daily average and an increase while pressing a higher cost for third party uh, for third-party customers and in closing <coughs> an additional we're placing a, a dual road around to the east side up to the northern and western slopes it's a dual road it's a permanent road that will allow easy access in and out and safer for the community okay, any questions no thank you sir thank we you appreciate question. it Okay, B, presentation of Texas Historical Commission Distinguished Service Award to our own, to our favorite historical commission, Polk County Historical Commission. Um, let me go ahead and read this and then we would like to take a photo with the court and our historical commission. So basically, once again, uh, our Polk County Historical Commission has earned the Distinguished Service Award for accomplishments during the 2017 year of service. Uh, so keep in mind that all these people are volunteers and that they represent us and represent us well uh, in the community and with the state. So, and they are recognized for having a well-rounded preservation program and efforts that celebrate and save the history and character of Texas. And so we want to present them with this Distinguished Service Award uh, from the state and on our behalf also and tell them thank you. Thank you for your service and we appreciate everything that you do. So if you all would come up here, we will take a photo. Almost took your mic. 
so much court for allowing us to continue our work at the museum and we appreciate all the help that you give us we think we have a wonderful museum and if any of you have not been to the museum please stop by we've got lots of new things happening we just are starting a discovery center for children and so we're gonna have get that rolling and then uh, Josh Johnson has been instrumental in starting some oral histories so we can preserve our history so if you have anybody that you think from the county all over the county we don't represent just Livingston that you would contact the museum we'd be happy to work up an interview for that and uh, we just want you to know that when people come to the museum we have lots of people coming from out of state and out of country they eat in our restaurants and they, they sleep in our hotels so that helps all of Polk <laughs> County so thank you so much for this honor we really appreciate it well, and thank Patricia. you, and thank you all for everything, Patricia. You We're having that book. Oh yes, yeah. that's right. Our history of Polk County. We've we've uh, partnered with the Alabama Cushota Indian Reservation. The Tribal Council has given us some funds, and so we're pr re reprinting the history of Polk County. We're totally out of the big red book, so we're fixing to start reprinting that. So that's a great thing. We have a, a special display. <coughs> what? We have a special display. Yes, we have a special display on Archaeology Month. Month. October is Archaeology Month, and uh, Tommy Dominey, a resident of well, he grew up in Goodrich, and he has collected archaeology things for a long, long time. So he's got that display at the museum right now. Thank Perfect. you so much. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank, you. Thank you all. Have they interviewed you yet? He's helping us. Thank you all very, very much. He's a good source. Okay, item number four, old business that we tabled from the last meeting. Uh, approved minutes of previous meeting, September 11th, 2018, and September 25th, 2018, the regular and the special meeting. Um, our clerk, Shalana, has asked for us to table September 25th uh, at this time and approve September 11th. And those were in your packet for your review. So moved. Second. Motion to approve, Commissioner Willis. Second, Commissioner Benson. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And then I need a motion to table the September 25th. So moved. Commissioner Overstreet, Commissioner Vincent, any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I think we all know that Madam Clerk has been slightly busy here lately, so we'll, we'll let her slide on this. Okay, a new business, consent agenda, and notice that you have an addendum on B or 
two addendums. Number one, in the amount of $386,441.80 for FY 2018. And number two, in the amount of $370,577.48 for FY 2019. And uh, we are, at Shalana's request, we're pulling item A. Are there any other items that anybody in the court would like to pull? Okay, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Second right. Commissioner Vincent, Second Commissioner Willis. All in favor say aye. Uh, yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I need a motion to uh, table the meeting, the min minutes for October 9th, which was a regular session. Second. Commissioner Willis, Commissioner Overstreet. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, um, at this time um, we have asked, we did an addendum, um, an amendment to the to our regular meeting uh, to discuss and take any all necessary action regarding general land office funds for Hurricane Harvey acquisitions and low to moderate income housing and infrastructure. Uh, so at this time I'd like to move item number 15 to number 6. Uh, Leslie Waxman has graciously agreed to, to come speak to the court and give us some updates because it just like everything else with the state, it appears that it's wait, 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 and then hurry, hurry, hurry. Right? So Leslie will update us and give us her advice. Good morning. Thank y'all for allowing me to be here. Um, there is a lot of information to cover, so my intent this morning is to just concentrate on the most pertinent things that need to happen first. Um, I believe you, you are all aware that you have an allocation for buyouts and for infrastructure. And as the judge said, it was a wait, wait, wait game. And all of a sudden, as of last week, the um, entities were contacted saying that you have until November 30th to let them know if you want to use your money, because I assume they will give it to someone else if you don't. Um, and you have until January 31st to put in an application. Um, this is a very ambitious deadline under the best circumstances and during football season, hunting season, holidays, and an election, it's super ambitious. So, um, there are a lot of things to discuss about how you want to spend your money and that, that's probably what you most want to hear from me this morning. But what I most want to talk about to, to get you to that point is in order for you to move forward with an application and um, start developing projects, you're going to need to procure services for administration and for engineering. Um, we, we discussed this with Kayla and I brought her a packet of what to do and of course Kayla moved on to different pastures and we're, we're sort of in a position where I'm not sure who that go-to person is to do the procurement. Um, for the 20 years that, that I've been here, Jan has been that person that helped. Um, so we're or Marcia. We're gonna, are, right. So we're going to need a little guidance and, and if this were something that I could do for you, it, I would gladly spend all night doing it and have brought it here, but I'm not allowed to do that. Um, so when, when we look at this agenda item, Judge, and, and all your commissioners um, to take any necessary action, I will tell you. Going forward, when we talk about hurricane recovery, we're going to have to be very specific on our agenda items um, because that is part of the procurement process and I hate to throw stuff like this around, but you'll hear it over and over. CFR 200 is what you have to follow. That's the, the procurement guidelines and um, there, there are plenty of templates and examples that I can help you with or whoever does the procurement, um, but you are going to have to pick somebody and let's get going. Um, 
I, in my mind, I just kind of looked at the calendar last night, Judge, and I see where you're going to need some special meetings because it, we, <clears throat> until you get everything nailed down, you really can't start developing anything. Um, it would be my suggestion, if, if possible, for y'all to have a special meeting, um, whenever that could be, to put agenda items on that are, are specific to what I'm talking about. Another thing that you're going to have to do is not only give yourself permission to go out for procurement, but you will need to appoint a committee as a rating committee slash a development committee. Now the development part is really on paper and, and not what anybody on the committee will have to do. That's the person that's going to actually do your documents. But you will need a, a rating committee. You are required to have at least one person off of the court. Um, I think it's preferable to have two from what I've seen. Um, I think three is a good number. Four starts. No. No. Nope, that's what's your number? Meetings violations. No. No. I mean, two, two off the court and okay. somebody else. Okay. When you no, said no, no, I know. No, I know. No, I'm, I'm aware of that. <laughs> but I think if you put more than four people on the committee, you're looking at a tie situation. It, it just gets a little trickier at that point. But it is up to you how you want to do that. Um, I will, when I get back to the office today, send an email with the exact wording of everything you need to, to start the procurement process. Um, th this is my, my main thing that I, I'm worried about because if you can't get past this, you can't do the rest. Um, excuse me. I'm here. Um, um, okay. So that's one procurement process, and I'm going to switch gears on you for a moment. Um, the regular CDB applications are due eight days after these applications. Polk County has a great shot at, at getting another one of these funded. While it's not a disaster application, it does help you with recovery. Um, I've been contacted by a water district already that and y'all have to help me out, is it Donald? Dollarsville. Dollarsville. Um, they're interested in a project, and yes. um, so I would suggest putting procurement on the next agenda to allow you to start that process so you could help them if, if that is your choice to do so. Um, but, but that is going to move rapidly as well. Um, I don't know what kind of projects you're looking at yet, but I do want to tell you yesterday, I had this posed to me twice, uh, so I want to bring it up. They said, what if we want to do drainage over here and I want to do street paving over here and I don't like this engineering firm doing street paving, I, I prefer them just doing drainage. Can I have two engineering firms? The answer is yes. We just need to know that before we start the procurement documents. Um, so if, if that is the situation for anybody, I wanted to bring it up. Um, I'm going to take a breath and let, and let y'all ask me some questions, if you have any. On the, all the information we've been seeing on this is buyouts and, and finally some infrastructure, but I know this money's predominantly towards housing and or aimed towards housing, buyouts, and things like that. We don't have that much in Polk County, so the other part of this money can be used on infrastructure projects such as bridges, roads, drainage. Yes, sir. I just want to make that clear before I absolutely dive off into it too far. Right. Well, Commissioner Willis's precinct is the only precinct that really has mm -hmm. some buyouts and acquisitions, mm -hmm. and so that money that is targeted for buyouts and acquisitions must be used for oh, buyouts yes. and acquisitions. Mm -hmm. um, so part of it also has been that, that the counties and Leslie and everybody else has been in discussion with the state about instead of leaving those federal dollars on the table, right, because we don't want to get into the land 
purchasing and structure purchasing business potentially than uh, having the state do the match and then it just becomes property of the state you know through through the county if that's something that mm -hmm. Commissioner Willis thinks would would behoove the residents in this county because it's the same people that we're having to go in time and time again mm -hmm. is it 36 38 structures 38 structures right now Oh. Yeah. Way more than I thought. So it's way more yeah. than it's way more than we than we originally anticipated. But on that dollars bill <coughs> water system, that yes, CDBG sir. money, that's not in on this. No, no that's, sir. that's a whole separate, separate. pot of money. It, right. Yeah. It's, it's totally separate, but I bring it up because money helps you recover. Yeah. And and that's my thought process. I know they're they they're, they stay in contact with me wondering what's going on what's well, going on what's going on so you know I had an engineer I thought that was going to go out and talk to him and help him that didn't happen so I'm going to find him an engineer I'll be in touch with them this week to try and get that going um, but th that again is another process where we need to follow the procurement laws yeah, yeah. Um, but but it's a good project and I think you have an excellent chance of being funded this go around unfortunately those deadlines are neck and neck um, the uh, and I, I want to tell y'all all this so so you know I I've been doing disaster since Rita, um, Rita, Ike, and now now this one. Um, this is the first time that they have really cut the consultants, and, and I call us worker bees. They have cut us out of the process altogether. <coughs> I do not receive emails about what's going on unless my clients send it to me. So if, if there is something that comes up, please don't assume that I know because I probably don't. Um, feel free to call me, email me, ask me about it. Um, there's Everything is coming at you like a fire hose, what I told you in the elevator. Um, so we, we do have enough time to get these things done. We just need to be very tenacious and wise with our time. Um, and make sure that we meet all our deadlines. So y'all tell me, what can I do to help y'all find that right person to do procurement now that we're a little shy? Well, and we, we will work on that. One of the things that, that I, because I assumed that as previous groups had done, that Leslie, the Waxman, and them all had the information. So when I sent her the email saying, looks like we need to get to work, um, we had previously discussed her coming and talking to the court about how you all wish to proceed and so then all of a sudden there was a looming deadline so um, Leslie's recommendation was that we go ahead and basically express an interest in both pots of money and then we can decide how how we wish to proceed with CDBG with the infrastructure you know, grants more monies from Harvey and with the buyouts and acquisitions from Harvey. But that we go ahead and, and, and send our letter of interest, I guess I should say, uh, expressing an interest in receiving those funds. Yes, ma'am. You know, to give us an opportunity to get past some of these deadlines and... Well, that, that'll get you... Hello. That'll yes. Mr. Johnson. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Johnson, could you step out, please? Um, that will get you through the first hurdle, and the reason I don't know what's going to happen with the buyout money. It's my hope that two, three years down the road, they give up and say, "Okay, we throw our hands up. You can have it for infrastructure." Um, the state will tell you adamantly they are not going to do that, but I've seen them change their minds more times than I can count. So. Once you give the money away, you can't That's ever right. get it back. So the, the smart thing to do is hold on to it for as long as you can. And that does need to be your first thing to take care of probably this week. An email seems to be doing the trick. They're coming back. Thank you for responding. We look forward to working with you. Nice and simple. So um, I, I would recommend that you do that as, as quickly as possible. and. Um, 
uh, I'm prepared to work with whatever person you need me to help with the procurement. Um, I've been doing, I call them little seminars with my clients to teach them how CFR 200 works um, and move forward from there. So, and, and after all that happens, what we truly need to do is have a workshop with all of you and with Courtney and, and find out what everyone's needs are, what their wants are, and what we can accomplish and let y'all prioritize those things. Sounds good. So, so the any and all necessary action is uh, if you all wish for us to go ahead and move forward and, and express an interest in all our monies, at this point instead of allowing some of them to go back in the pot and then we will continue to work on our on our on our state and our legislators on trying to find a way for the matching funds to come from the state instead of out of our general fund monies okay and and I, I just do want to say this too because I have the opportunity to there was a call Friday morning and judge I believe you were on that call it was only for Deep East Texas and some random people in the mix. I don't understand why the GLO is not communicating with the state as a whole, but, but they're not. So I'm very careful about any information that I hear and that I don't see in writing um, for that reason. Yeah, and that's why we want to get it in <laughs> writing. We want to also follow it up with an official letter saying whatever the court decides. Yes, ma'am. And um, like I said, I, I do believe it's going to take a few special meetings and, and a little bit more um, of your time than you would like. On these, on these projects, you know, thinking about it, you know, mm -hmm. is it, it uh, predominantly like in the past, fail to function type projects on infrastructure and things like sure. that? Sure. Um, now, we, um, it, it's basically the same as what you went through with Ike. Um, so those are the things we'll be looking for documentation of, um, you know, if you have photographs is what they want to see, fail to function, anything you have with FEMA. Um, this, this GLO money can be used as match money for something else. And I, I talked to Courtney while we were hanging out and um, it doesn't appear that y'all are looking at applying with Cheatham for mitigation projects. That was my only other question is if you were going to go that route. Since you're not and you're going to use your money straight up, yes sir, you can do drainage like what you said, roads, bridges. We want to harden things. We want to raise roads. What I hear the state saying and HUD is they want mitigation projects more than anything else. We want to improve it so it doesn't happen again. In reality, we all know whatever's going to happen is going to happen. We can only do our best. So. The problem I'm running into with them right now on the mitigation projects are they wanting us to fund all this stuff <clears throat> and get reimbursement on it. And I'm still waiting on money from 16 to be able to do these projects with that hasn't been released. Yes, sir. Because everyone, you know, a lot of people don't understand when we have a flood or disaster or something like that. In my precinct, I front the money on all that stuff and, and sit around two or three years waiting to get it back. Well, which is getting to be a bigger and bigger problem. A bad problem. And um, I, I personally am concerned about how GLO has the capacity to rate these applications because a lot of them are going to be used for, for match money, only they, they haven't looked at TEDM's applications, GLO hasn't looked at them. I can't see how things just start falling into place, um, but we have to act as though that will happen so that you know we don't make a mistake. Um, I, I hope the deadline gets extended. I had a client yesterday tell me that he heard on the call that there was a little latitude about that hard deadline. I did not hear that. I didn't hear that. Okay. Um, I was going to check into that and um, <coughs> that that's sort of where we are and I can keep y'all updated by email about what's going on. Does that work good for all of you? Mm -hmm. or do you okay. Yes ma'am. We'll do that. 
Okay. I've okay. got a question. Yes, sir. Now, I've got a project in a subdivision called Holiday Lake Estates where they had a, a drainage, uh, overflow drainage project several years ago so the lake doesn't run over the county road, which is the border of it. Uh, the drainage boxes are uh, in disrepair and the, the whole drainage issue needs to be addressed. But, and it goes under a county road, which I'll have to uh, be particularly mindful of. But uh, my question is, before I go out and hire an engineer, I need somebody to tell me, yes, this project will qualify uh, under the, uh, the other money, the infrastructure money. Who, who would that person be? This person. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, that's a good question. Um, what I would need to do, and, and either me or David or someone, take a look at it. Um, it's easier for me if I have a map uh, of the area, but since you don't have an engineer working on it yet, we would just sort of need to ride it. I'm going to have to look at either the census track or I'm going to have to do a door-to-door -door survey out there to determine if it's low mod because 51% of your money has to be spent on low mod. So if you would like us to put that in the mix, Commissioner, i see about getting someone to come look at that next week with you. Okay. Okay. Should I just part, call you, mm -hmm. email you? Okay. Part of the, <laughs> part of the argument, um, Leslie, and I had discussed was the LOMA, the LMI, and part of what happened is that the state of Louisiana got a waiver for the entire state for LMI. So then they were able to have way more increased, you know, flexibility in terms of what they did with their monies. And with the way the LMI falls for us, like literally, I think it was 45, 46,000. If someone makes 45, 46,000, here they don't qualify, but if they make seventy six thousand in another county, they do qualify. And so it's such a wide range yeah. of how the low mod is is set up. Or it may have been thirty six thousand. I don't no, recall the figure straight off my head. From here, but it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so, so mm -hmm. we're we're working to try to get the entire st all of those counties to receive a waiver on the LMI. But at this time, it hasn't happened. So I think we just need to move forward with Leslie's recommendations. I, I do because what I heard in, in, you know, the call was kind of jumbled, but what I heard was that if you, Polk County, wants to take your best chance at getting a waiver, we'll stand here and smile and, and support and that. On. Yes, we will cheer you on. Um, if you want to try to get a waiver, I will help you prepare that documentation but with a three month deadline, yeah. I, I don't know that I see the point. Um, so unless we get in dire straits and then we change our, our way of doing things. So, um, <coughs> okay. okay, thank Any you other all. Questions? Thank you, Leslie, okay. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am, I'll be in touch with y'all more than you probably wanna be. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so would you all like to proceed with um, the letter of interest in both aspects? So moved. Second. Go ahead. Commissioner Overstreet. Commissioner Vincent, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number six, back on the regular agenda. Consider approval of personnel matters as follows. Um, I would like to move this agenda item to the end of the meeting after we've gotten an opportunity to do the executive session since we're going to be discussing um, department heads and other personnel issues. Um, item number seven, consider approval of the 2019 uh, Polk County holiday schedule. Uh, that is in your packet. <coughs> Most different. Approved. Okay, can Excuse I can I answer oh, yeah. something real quickly? Um, one of the things that traditionally we have done is given Christmas Eve and Christmas Day off. However, when we were going through this, we didn't um, pay attention to the fact that that would put us working only one Monday, only the Monday on on that weekend week. So it'd be Monday, December twenty third. In the past, the court has approved sometimes when that happens to go ahead and take that. As a holiday 
And so what's the court's pleasure? I would suggest that we add it to that uh, Christmas holiday and maybe delete Columbus Day to balance it out. Uh, Columbus is a federal. Do we have to recognize it? Uh, <laughs> well, can we just accept it and give everybody an extra day and you, add the Monday? You're talking about what, 14? At any given time, we've had between 13 and 15 days. And so right now we have 14 just because I was trying to stay with the 14. So we would, in essence, give our employees an extra holiday. I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Willis, second Commissioner Overstreet. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, number eight, review and accept the 2019 renewal of retiree health and prescription <coughs> coverages through Texas Association of Counties Retiree Medical uh, Program, and the copy of the renewal is included for your review. Is it basically the same as we had before? Yes, sir. Same? Yes. No changes like ours? Uh, no, the prescription coverage did go down. Um, luckily, it, we took a decrease in the cost for that, so All it's right. lowering the premium. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve, Commissioner Overstreet. Second, Commissioner Vincent. All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number nine, consider and approve new permit fees uh, proposal. Uh, we, Rebecca Marlowe was asked to review the, the fees uh, currently the Polk County on the permit fees and we are below average on the development and the on-site sewage uh, fees and so she has put the information a copy of the review is in there and included for you to look at. Are we talking about just the on-site sewer stuff right now or that whole conglomerate that we had building demo she yeah, just the permit the fees itself um fees on the sewer systems the sewer, sewer systems permit, only permit permit permit. <laughs> development permit oh the development permit and the sewer that's the sewer all permit. not all that other stuff yeah not the, BOD, no, the tss yeah. and all that yeah. no that this actually uh commissioner vincent was who asked for a review of that just because there were some discrepancies in terms of developers and, and people that, that were planning to come to the county or that were, were working on projects. Kind of have to position paper too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to take this until Commissioner Purvis is back. Okay, that's fine. Sure. If y'all don't mind. That's fine. Say. Okay, Commissioner Overstreet, motion to table. Second by Commissioner Willis. All in favor say aye. aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number 10. Discussion and any all necessary action regarding transferring the approved capital projection funds for a new vehicle in the amount of $30,000 from the Office of Emergency Management to another department. Um, if you all recall in the workshops, we discussed this, that um, Courtney had, had decided that she was going to keep the Suburban, but then it ended up staying on there on the capital purchases. We have two, uh, the, the Jay Burks has requested a uh, new vehicle for maintenance and also the extension office. Historically, both departments have asked for a new vehicle for the last two years. Uh, so what is the court's pleasure? I'll make a motion that <clears throat> we transfer the money from uh, emergency management to the extension department. Second. Well. Motion by Commissioner Willis to give the vehicle to AgriLife. Seconded by Commissioner Vincent. Any Question. further? Yes, sir. What's going to happen with the truck they currently have? Uh, we can certainly transfer that to any any department that would like to have it. Yeah. But it becomes its property of, yeah, of the county. Yeah. yeah. So we can do, um, if we have a department that's interested in having it, then that department can have it. If not, uh, one of the things that had come up before was that there was an interest in going ahead and putting all, all of our stuff on the auction, you know, on the internet auction. 
So first we'll see if another department wants it. Okay. Well, 30000 is probably not going to buy uh, true. Uh, well, so or maybe it could be traded in. Uh, and the 30000 might get them a truck. Pizzle. I mean, we can it's early now, but now that's what I was looking at, 30000 depending on what kind of truck y'all are wanting to buy. Are y'all hauling stuff anymore? Well, yes. Yes, we still hold trailers. We still go into pastures. We still do all that kind of stuff. Um, the one thing I'm concerned about, um, gas vehicles don't hold up as long as those diesels do. And if it's going to take me another 16, 20 years to get another vehicle, <laughs> I want to stay with a diesel. But um, if it's something that we can, you know, definitely within the next, you know, five, six, ten years to trade in, um, I'm okay with a gas vehicle. Um, we don't haul any goosenecks um, as much. Um, if we still have the red trailer. If, you know, if an emergency came up and we had to use that, I know at one time they had in the past, uh, I think with Ike, Hurricane Ike, but since I've been here, no, we haven't used the red trailer except once. Now, another thing too is keep in mind that we have vehicles that the SO, right, is, has purchased and so they have vehicles that are, that are going to get traded in or sold on auction or something. <laughs> So what we could do is allow everything to go to the auction and allow some of those funds to then be utilized to get whatever Texas Agri Life needs. It would be basically vehicles to a vehicle. You'd like to have a similar truck? Yes. Could you get us? Um, could you get us some some proposals so we kind of have an idea of how much money we're talking about? Absolutely. And then we can bring it back to the court at a later date. And decide how exactly if we would how we would fund the difference. Okay, that work. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm inter I, I'll be straight up with you. I'm interested in the truck, and I would be willing to to transfer funds once, once you once you figure out what it's worth. What it's worth, or what 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 you're going to need, then uh, okay, bring it back. Perfect. We did, and I'm interested in the difference on what it's going to be for them. Gotcha. for the truck we did have it valued when we took it to um, premier oh gosh it was last year when mark was still here um, and they said probably about six thousand was the trade year yeah. so okay so if you'll find out what the what? new vehicle that you want looks like well then we can come up with yeah. with a way of taking revenues from other vehicles and applying them over there we'll okay thank you ma'am so for now we have a motion on the table from Commissioner Second. Willis, Commissioner seconded by Commissioner Vincent to um, transfer the vehicle or the capital projections to Texas AgriLife. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Uh, yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 11, consider any and all necessary action regarding placement and maintenance of a traffic control device, namely a no parking sign on the South Tyler Road at FN 1988, Precinct 1, in accordance with Section 251.156 of the Texas Transportation Code. Um, we did the public notice and hearing um, earlier today, and nobody presented themselves for discussion. I'm assuming the city of Goodrich is okay? Uh, it's not in the city. Okay. Very well. So moved. Second. Move Commissioner Willis, second Commissioner Overstreet. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number 12, consideration and discussion of Sheriff's request for interlocal cooperation agreement between Sheriff's Office and Big Sandy Independent School District for a school resource officer. Um, you received a copy of the agreement for your review and it's been uh, looked at by and it was presented to us by Big Sandy ISD and so it's up to you all. Uh, Chief you want to add? We took and uh, have had several discussions and over the uh, contract and have, had made some changes and I think that after speaking with uh, Mr. Carpenter and the Sheriff Review Unit as well um, plus um, it's been reviewed by council. Uh, we're all in agreement with it, and are certainly are eager to move forward with getting an officer on, on the school campus. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Commissioner Overstreet, second Commissioner Vincent. Any further discussion or questions? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Item number <coughs> 13 consider any and all necessary action regarding the rebids rebid number 2019 01.03 01.05 and 01.07 precinct one road materials approve all the bids all bids comes as a motion from commissioner willis second, second commissioner overstreet any discussion or questions all in favor say aye. Yeah. Motion carries. Rebid number 2019-02.03, and 02.07, precinct two road materials. Receive all bids. All. all bids. Commissioner Vincent. Second. Second Commissioner Willis. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Rebid number 2019-03.03, 3.05, 07 precinct three road materials. Milt, talk to anybody? <laughs> Most to approve. Yeah. All, <laughs> all material. All material. Second. Commissioner Overstreet, <laughs> second Commissioner Vincent. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Rebid number 2019-04.03, 04.05, and 04.07, Precinct 4 road materials. All materials. All materials. Commissioner Overstreet. Second. Second Commissioner Willis. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any further discussion or questions? Motion passes. Uh, rebid number 2019.05, or dash 05, bulk purchase of limestone road base. Most approved. All bids. All bids. All bids. Second. Commissioner Overstreet, One. Second Commissioner Vincent. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Rebid number 2018-06, tires. Most approved. All bids. All bids. All bids. Commissioner Overstreet, Second Commissioner Vincent. Any further discussion or questions? Judge, should these all read 2019 or 18? Uh, that's, a, that's a typo. The, 19. Oh, well, that should be 19. Right. Okay. That's a typo. Okay, any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, item number 14. Consider approval of sheriff's request to advertise for bids for the purchase of nine sheriff's department vehicles to be paid from general fund balance and included on the FY 2019 reimbursement resolution for year end issuance of legally authorized uh, debt. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, Commissioner Willis. Second. Second, Commissioner Vincent. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, at this time, uh, we're going to go into executive session as authorized by Texas Government Code Title V, Subchapter D, Texas Open Meetings Act, as amended, Section 551.074, Personnel Matters to Deliberate the Appointment, Employment, Evaluation, <coughs> Reassignment Duties of a Public Officer or Employee. Um, so if you all will excuse us, you're more than welcome to wait, because we will be back in open session in 48. 1048, thank you. Ma <laughs>